Let's talk about the Aptos blockchain, discuss what it is and how does it work. Hey everyone, this is Keystrokes. Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll talk about the new and upcoming Aptos blockchain, which has become very popular so fast. And I think it's important for us to cover some basics of it. So let's see everything that we'll cover today. So we'll talk about the basic concepts of Aptos blockchain. We'll discuss how transactions and states work. We'll touch upon accounts, how they are created and how do they work. Then we'll talk about coins and tokens. And then we'll touch upon our favorite topic, which is how gas works. Then we'll explore different wallets that we can use with Aptos. And then the explorers that's available to us. I've been going through the documentation and you can find way more details in this link right here, which points to the documentation of Aptos. And going through documentation can be boring sometimes. And I'll always appreciate some coffee so that I can keep going through this documentation and bring these videos to you. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe because we'll make more Aptos videos in the future. So let's see what's Aptos blockchain. It was created by Aptos Labs. It's a layer one blockchain. And if you don't know what layer one means, it's basically the base network, meaning it's its own blockchain itself and it's not piggybacking on any existing blockchain. It's very similar to Bitcoin, Ethereum and Solana. They're all layer one. And the word on the street is that this is the Solana killer. So let's keep an eye on Aptos and see how well it performs. Okay, so let's get into some more fun topics. Let's talk about transactions and states. And if you're into your blockchain and you have done a lot of Solana programming, then all of these concepts should be pretty straightforward to you. So a transaction is basically exchange of data between accounts. It's as simple as that. And the state represents the current state of all accounts that exist in the blockchain. So at a given moment, the state basically reflects all the accounts and the data that they hold. If a transaction happens, then that creates a new state in the blockchain. And Aptos uses proof to make sure that the transactions and states, they're verified and that they're correct. So let's see some visuals. So on the right, let's say that's our blockchain ledger. We have some state, let's say state five, and then some transaction happens, let's say transaction six. Then this state five and transaction six is used by some method called apply, which is part of the blockchain. And this creates a new state, let's say it's called state six. And for a more concrete example, let's say we have state 56, where Alice and Bob, they had 100 apt and 200 apt. Please let me know in comments if it's not pronounced as apt. Now let's say transaction 57 happens, where Bob sends 100 apt to Alice. So now the previous state 56, which represents balances of Alice and Bob, and this new transaction 57, where Bob sends 100 apt to Alice, they're applied and this application creates a new state where Alice now has 200 apt and Bob has 100 apt. So you can see every time a transaction happens, it creates a new state based on the previous state and the transaction that happens. Let's talk about how accounts work and some basics of it. So accounts are 32 byte account addresses. They're shown as 64 hexadecimal characters. And you can see an example on the screen, which I think is very hard to remember and even hard to compare. An account can contain blockchain assets and they're stored as a resource and they can be coins or NFTs. This resource concept comes from this language Move, which Aptos blockchain uses. It's very similar to Rust for Solana. Now, whenever you create any new account, the initial data that it stores is something called as an authentication key and a sequence. And we'll cover these next. So let's first talk about the sequence number. So each account comes with a sequence number and it's strictly increasing. That is, it just keeps going up and cannot go down. Every time a transaction happens on the account, it has to be incremented. And this is where sequence number becomes very critical. Every transaction has to include the correct value of the sequence number. Otherwise, the whole transaction will just be rejected. This really helps with replay attack. And if you don't know what a replay attack is, it's exactly what it sounds like. Let's say in our previous example, when Bob sent 100 apt to Alice, this transaction can easily be intercepted and it can be replayed. And if it's replayed, another 100 apt gets transferred to Alice and so on. So this is a great mechanism to prevent any replay attacks. So now let's talk about how an account is created. And this is where we'll cover what's the authentication key about. 
So the first step is to generate a private key and a public key. And then we choose a preferred signature scheme. By default, it uses single signature. The next step is to take this public key that we just generated and using that, it generates a 32 byte authentication key. And as a final step, when the account is created, we initialize account sequence as zero, just as we discussed, and we store the authentication key in the account and the authentication key itself becomes the account address. And you can see they're the same initial values when the account is first created. But a word of caution, the keys can be rotated with a new pair of public and private keys. So basically you can generate a new set of public and private keys and associate it to the account. Now that can change the authentication key, but the account address does not change. I know this sounds convoluted, but this is how their accounts work. And all of this will become more clear as we get more hands-on in future videos. So next let's talk about coins and tokens. So we have Aptos coins, which they say is a framework for fungible tokens. And these are similar to the whitelist token that we use for NFTs, just like Solana tokens. Then let's actually talk about Aptos tokens. This is our favorite. It's used for NFTs. And so it can store rich metadata and have all kinds of functionalities. So I know it can get confusing because in Solana, when we say tokens, that would usually mean whitelist tokens. And in this case, we have coins and tokens. Let's talk about gas. I think gas is a very common term in blockchain now. It's basically a processing fee for the transaction. And Aptos blockchain works like Ethereum. You can pay more gas to prioritize your transaction so that it gets processed faster. Now there is some math to determine what the gas cost would be and it's in the documentation. But the easiest way is to just simulate a transaction and you'll get the estimate of the cost. So those were all boring theory concepts. Let's talk about how you can get hands on with this. The first topic is, which wallet do we use with Aptos? Based on what I found, we have Petra wallet and we have Martian wallet. They both look pretty cool to me, but Petra wallet is mentioned in official documentation and that's what I've been using. But I think either of these work. Now for our developers, you might be thinking, what explorers do we use to look at our transactions, NFTs, tokens, and whatnot. So we have the official Aptos Explorer by Aptos Labs. And then we have a product from Etherscan as well, which is called Aptoscan. There are more explorers out there, but these two are the best explorers that I found. And just to share my experience, even with these explorers, I found they weren't complete. Maybe I used them at the wrong time, but I couldn't find my NFTs or my coins in there, and it was hard for me to find my transactions. I'm sure the explorers will get mature over time, and maybe I just used the explorers at the wrong time. So we just covered the basics of Aptos blockchain, what it is, how it works, and some of the base concepts about it. But there are so many other topics that we can cover on this. I primarily wanted to focus on topics that will help us with NFTs, both as a developer and a non-developer. I am going to create more in-depth videos about this, but if this topic has piqued your interest, then feel free to refer to this documentation to understand the concepts, and they have several examples in there as well. And if you're a real research person, Aptos even has a 17 page white paper that you can read and understand Aptos blockchain completely. So let's see what we'll cover next. I want to focus on getting hands on now, but that has a prerequisite of you subscribing to the channel so that you can get updates on when I post these new hands on videos. So we'll start by posting our first transaction, then we'll create a NFT collection and add some NFTs to it then we'll try to create a dApp, and I definitely need more suggestions from our viewers. Please feel free to refer to the documentation of Aptos. So far, I found them good, and maybe you can find something interesting in there, and don't forget to share it with the community as well. Well, that's all I had for this video. I didn't want to make this video too boring or too technical, so I just tried to discuss the basics of Aptos blockchain. I hope it was helpful. At least it was very helpful to me. I could explore Aptos, what's available out there, and how it works. Those basics are very important before we dive deep into some hands-on. So if this video helped you, please don't forget to like and subscribe and to like me on Twitter. And I'm trying to grow my presence a little more. So please feel free to buy me a coffee and I'll read more and more docs and create more videos for you. And you can also find me on Insta, Facebook, Patreon, and so many other places. I'm just trying to grow my presence. So please feel free to like me on those platforms as well. 
I'm working on the next video already and it'll be out very soon. Thank you so much for joining in.